Hi guys, um, in the last video I explained all about ground effects and uh, how that worked and the effect it had on Formula 1 cars uh, between 1978 and 1982. Now in this video I'm going to explain um, the sort of design strategies that took place after uh, or let's say from after 1982 or from 1983 onwards because from 19, 1983 onwards ground effects were abolished and um, Formula One cars, it was mandated that Formula One cars have a flat bottom between the two endpoints uh, within the wheelbase. As a, a wheelbase, a wheelbase of a car is basically this, there's the two centers, and the wheelbase is this bit. That's what that's what's, what you call a wheelbase of a car. And in Formula One cars, that is all flat. So no more wing profiles. The only wing profiles that you can have are the rear wing here and behind the, cent the center line, the center of the, of the rear wing, you're allowed to have a sort of a wing profile here at the end. And I'm going to talk about that in some other video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to concentrate on the rear wing. And as you can see here, in gr with ground effects, the whole body was generating downforce. Now, with this gun, you can only generate downforce through the front wing and the rear wing. And the rear wing was producing or, or was the major contributor of downforce from 1983 onwards. So here it was paramount to find some, uh, to, have, to have this rear wing uh, produce effective downforce and, and produce that efficiently. Now, to produce, um, uh, let, let me draw a wing in 3D first. So it'll, it'll look like that. That's the rear wing, and those are the side plates I explained in, uh, in a previous video. And it's it. for, for, for the swing to operate efficiently, it's very important that it receives clean air. Clean, not, in, not, not meaning it doesn't contain any dirt, but it doesn't contain any turbulences. That that air should not be full of turbulences because any air full of turbulences will 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 render the wing the wing or will reduce the effectiveness of that wing. Wings need nice smooth air without any turbulence. So that's the first thing what wings require to 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 operate efficiently. And the second thing what wings have to do they have to avoid that leakage because in the in some previous video I explained that. Downforce is produced because here at the top you've got some high pressure. I'm going to just say high P, and at the bottom you have low P, low P area, and you have to you want to avoid that leakage from high pressure to low pressure. That's why you have these side plates, another important factor in wings. And these two things are very important. Basically, clean air or no turbulences, no turbulences, and no leakage. And if we look at the history of wings in Formula One, like from the end of the 60s uh, till the 80s, it basically started, constructors were always looking for these two things. For instance, in the 60s, uh, I'm just going to draw a, a car here. That's a car. And in the 60s, what, what constructors did, they mounted wings very high. Why? Because up there you have you have no turbulences because down here you have a lot of turbulences generated by your own car and by the cars in front of you but up there you have no turbulences but those wings got bad those wings were like the norm in 19 in 1968 but then they got banned and they had to the, the, the maximum height of that wing was was uh, was fixed i don't know what the exact height is but it was something like you know uh, what you what you see today another thing what was happening in the early 70s Again, in order to have this, to, uh, to minimize those turbulences, a lot of cars looked like that. Here's the wheels. Here's the car. And the wing wasn't mounted here, but was mounted way back here. Again, you have the fuselage here with the driver. The driver and the wheels they're generating a lot of turbulence and by putting the wing way back here you're avoiding all those turbulences and um, and getting cleaner air 
you see that kind of stuff. Look at look at pictures of, of for instance, the Lotus 72 of 1972-73, and you'll see what I mean. The, the rear wing was wanted way back. Again, this was also banned, and then in the mid-70s, or let's say uh, since 77-78, wing cores and then ground effects emerged, and then the rear wings didn't play such a big role until 1983. Now, from 93 onwards, several uh, wing strategies appeared in Formula 1. The first one was, I'm just going to draw a wing here in 3D again. There's your wing. And there are them side plates. And from 93 till 94, what a lot of constructors did, they mounted small winglets here. So you had like the main wing and then smaller winglets on the side which naturally this whole setup produced more downforce than that simple or major wing on its own. Those were banned in 85 so then uh, Gordon Murray of Brabham uh, came up with a new design the BT55 and what he did uh, basically, in, uh, before that, before that car, Formula One cars looked something like that. You've got that there, and there's the wing, something like that. Okay, and uh, if uh, and and uh, what Gordon Murray did with his Brabham BT55 was he lowered the car substantially, made it basically very flat. The driver was practically lying in the car instead of sitting in it. It was very flat. Because that height, because that height of the rear wing is fixed, if you want to have, you cannot raise the wing. So if you can't raise the wing and you still need clean air, what you can do is lower the car. And that, that's what Gordon Murray did. There's the wing. And you can see that wing is getting much better airflow than this car and you can compare this is let's say the BT55 and compare that if you look at any, any pictures from 1986 compare that with the McLaren MP4 and you can see the difference in design uh, the McLaren was very bulky the wing was was barely if you look at the car from the front the, the rear wing was barely visible Whereas if you look at the Brabham from the front, you can see the wing very clearly. And that shows you that that wing is getting a lot of uh, uh, clean or turbulence free air. Nonetheless, that car was a flop. The BT55, I think, I think it scored just two points in that season. But the problems were uh, also with the motor. And there were other problems with the car. It's not only the wing. Uh, it's, I mean, it wasn't the concept which... I don't think the concept was wrong because um, another McLaren, the MP44 of 1985 looked very similar to the Brabham and to the concept of the Brabham. So the concept wasn't that wrong. I think the car, the mechanical parts and so were, were, were the problem with, the, with that car. Uh, another thing tried by McLaren in 1995, what they did, I'm going to draw that car here. There you go. And they had, they had here a small mini wing augmenting that main wing at the rear. And a similar setup was tried by Lotus in 1974. They also had a sort of a double wing setup. And uh, it was like that. And here you had one wing. I'm just going to draw it without the side plates now. And here you had the second wing below it. And... Um, and that was the setup of the Lotus 76. That was the Lotus 76 of 1974. It had this double wing setup. And McLaren in 1995 was trying the same thing. And both concepts were never seen again. So, I mean, I don't know how the aerodynamics work. Nobody, nobody talked about that. But um, I guess it didn't work. It didn't work that great. So you can see through all those. Um, Images that 
constructors were frantically trying to get their um, rear wings operate effectively in order to counter for that loss in ground effects that they had previous to 1983. And um, another area which I'm gonna uh, talk about in the next video is this area here. Because this area also received a lot of attention for downforce from 1983 onwards, because again, the, 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 they were looking for downforce to or recoup that lost downforce that they had during the ground effects uh, days. And um, another video, I'm going to also explore the front wing because that also uh, underwent some major changes again to recoup that lost down.